being a specialist in Sri Lanka. So I'm going to talk about being a generalist or how to be a successful general practitioner in Sri Lanka. So uh, I'm, I'm a family physician uh, who uh, practices in Vattala and I also uh, act as the young doctor's lead in the Wonka, that is the World Organization of Family, Family Doctors, which is the prime organization or the apex organization of uh, the family doctors. So when you talk about general practitioners, what is the, uh, what, what do you always think or what uh, comes to your mind? It's all about, I think, uh, we, even though we don't have a chance to do an interactive session, I know most of you would think a general practitioner or GP. Then you always uh, remind, it always reminds of, and or you always remember uh, the private practice. So you are correct because as you can see from the research evidence, 55% uh, of people with illness or symptoms usually sought care from private sector in Sri Lanka. So this is research evidence. So we can understand that private sector is so important. So being a general practitioner is also so important. But when you take people who uh, provide primary care services in Sri Lanka, there are a lot, not only the general practitioners or private practitioners. So I'll be talking about them. There are qualified general practitioners. There are private practitioners whom we see a lot that doctors with MBBS only, and we have primary care doctors in state primary care hospitals and OPDs. And then we have a specialist are also providing some private care services and we have uh, complementary and alternative practitioners like Ayurvedic practitioners and we have quacks as well. So who is a general practitioner? So I'm not going to talk about a person, but just a private practitioner without a qualification. So before going to know about who is a general practitioner, just understand what is general practice is. So general practice, also the academic discipline of family medicine is a medical discipline which provides continuing and comprehensive healthcare for the individuals and family. You know, the general practitioners are usually or should be usually based in a community. So it's a discipline in breadth, not in depth. So you can understand from this. So generalists know many things in breadth, but not to a very, uh, not to a depth, or they don't have a very, very deep knowledge like a specialist. Generalists know many things. They can cover, they can understand, they can uh, treat for many diseases. And when you take specialists, they know deep or narrow uh, disciplinary knowledge and uh, specialty. So that is the difference between generalist and specialist. So when you take the scope of family medicine or general practice, it encompasses all and every disease and entity. So, so if you take this, this is as a specialist. This is a generalist. They have a broad knowledge superficially on many things. I have to, I have a very good news to people who are thinking of being a general practitioner. This is the Illinois model about generalism and specialism. It's about a probability for success or sometimes earning capacity in a problematic era like an era we are here in, for example, uh, 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 in an economic crisis. So you can see usually, right, when there are uh, more opportunities, specialists can always prosper. They have more opportunities in, in, era, in an era where problems are less. But when you take generalists, they have, uh, uh, compared to the specialists, they have usually a less 
probability for success that is probably the earning capacity but it will never or it will uh, never reduce or it will never get less with problems so being a general practitioner in an era like this where financial difficulties are more is good so in an era with economic crisis being a general practitioner is better than being a specialist so a general practitioner is a person who follows these principles of family medicine he always lives in a community where he provides first contact care for the patients and they continue care for sometimes ages right from disease regarding a disease when you take diabetes they will continue care about diabetes and also when you take a person you will continue care for the person as well and the comprehensive care it's not about one disease it's not only about diabetes it's not only about hypertension it's not only about a neurological problem it's not only about an endocrine problem he will look after the patient comprehensively about everything and he will offer a patient centered care to that patient not to a disease and he will coordinate he will coordinate care whenever we cannot handle the problem the gp would send the patient to the specialist they will select the best specialist they will select the best service so that is coordination of care and they will do health promotion and disease prevention as well that is a that is a simple but an important thing could be done by a gp and they are oriented to the family and community so a general practitioner i am going to talk about is a doctor with a training in family medicine or general practice so simply that is a family doctor with a qualification with an understanding with a training about general practice of family medicine so it is not a, a private practitioner not a just private practitioner i am talking about so that's very important the private practice pri private practice is very easy you can do it with the mbbs but earning a gp qualification is very important in future so how can we set up a gp set up a general practice so i'm not going to go into details of a lot of things so i'm quickly going to this because we have limited time so how can you set up gp now most of you uh, you in this audience my junior colleagues uh will start their careers after the internship so there could be people uh, who are just about to do the internship and people who are who have finished internship already so after the internship you are eligible according to sri lankan law not as in other countries you can do a private practice with an mbbs so you have to start it because even in sri lanka to earn a qualification you have to have some practice so we have to start small don't think of big high five things big places spacious places you can find a place which is, which is simple which has basic facilities like a consultation room a, a patient waiting area right facilities like a, 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 a washroom and where confidentiality is preserved so finding a place would be a bit difficult sometimes but you can find a place so think of basic facilities like water sanitation basic equipments you know many things that could be provided by yourself many things are available already for you and you, most of the time our general practitioners are dispensing medicine it's not only consultation we give away some medicine so you have to have essential medicine simple medicines would be fine whenever there are uh, something to be bought outside you can always give a prescription in the initial stage especially you would need a, an assistant sometimes even in my career in the initial period i did not have an assistant because there were no patients hardly any patients so there there was no need to have an assistant would have you can always uh, see the patient and also dispense by yourself but there are problems regarding uh, examine patients especially 
when you are, when you need a chaperone. So you, there would be some other methods you can use as well where, when there's no chaperone with you. Think of waste disposal when you start the practice. And something important is private health uh, care services, regulatory commission approval, PHSRC. Now in uh, Sri Lanka, even though it's not mandatory, it would be mandatory. PHSRC approval for a private practice would be important. They would look into your facilities and how you are practicing patient safety methods. So it's not a big high fives up. It's all about uh, getting it. You can just go to the PHSRC website and get to know about that. Initially, you don't need it, but in time to come, better to have it as well. So this is how you are going to start a long journey. And there would be challenges, definitely, but you have to convert those challenges to opportunities. These days, the main issue is about rents. If you are going to have a place not yours, you would need to rent it, uh, get, a, get a place uh, from another person where rents are very high these days. But you can uh, try a small place uh, in a community. So you can start small small, while you are improving your practice, you can move to a closer, better place. Sometimes less space. This is a problem. You would have seen some private practices like, you know, Kadakamar, where, where patients can hear what the other patient is, patients are telling. So these are problems, but with uh, you can do small things to avoid those things as well, but always try to have a place where you can preserve the privacy of the patients, even though it's a less space. At least you have to have the place to do your consultation and examine the patient, and there should be a place to the patients to wait, a waiting area for the patient. And probably the high prices of the medicines and equipment would be a challenge these days, but you can always start with a simple medicines, which are mostly needed. So that would be a good way rather than moving to hi-fi stuff initially. Equipment, most of the things you have, stethoscope, uh, and uh, you know, uh, things to examine other examination equipment, uh, equipment to do a simple dressing, wound care, et cetera. So these things would not be that much, uh, that much uh, expensive. Then start small all this. And there would be difficult is in finding assistance because people with those skills needed, like dispensing and also wound care, and sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 taking blood and those things would be difficult to find. But you can probably find a, per a person, uh, and initially you can always start by your own. Then maintaining the quality of care is very important. Uh, that is one of the very important things because quality of care is always related to the patient safety as well. So that is a challenge, of course. But when you start from the beginning, think of the quality of care, the patient safety. That is the way forward. And most importantly, a few people, a few other speakers, including your dean, uh, spoke about the continuity of uh, work about talk about the work life balance. So a GP is a friend of your community, friend of your patients. So he should be there most of the time in the week, as the continuity of care is very important. When the patient comes searching for you, if you are not there in the practice, that would be a problem. So. Uh, this would be a, an issue if you need to take time for your family. So how to do this work balance? And sometimes a GP, as a GP, and you would be a part-time GP, where you do your, an evening practice and in the morning only, early in the morning. So what could be done? So what, what I do is I, I, I take my Sunday off and I have a locum practitioner on that day. So one good way is a group practice. Starting a group practice, a few people with some two 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 persons would be fine. So you would have uh, alternative days or a few days for you as well, your your yourself and your family. 
So at least have one day for you, you, you yourself, like Sunday or another day. So continuity of care and work-life balance would be a very important thing. While you are continuing your patient care, you have to have your time for you and your family as well. So how to increase the quality of care of your practice? Those are the challenges. So think of uh, having some space essential for patient care. Initially, you would not be able to provide these facilities, but think of providing things like water, sanitation, and more equipment. This could be step by step. Initially, you would not need them, but later on, you would need them. But step by step, try to increase the quality. And maintaining medical patient who has come to you a few times. Fourth time also, if you're asking, I can't remember what your uh, problem was. It would be, you know, would be very embarrassing to the patient as well. So if you have medical records, now we have, uh, I mean, you, uh, earlier it was paper-based medical records, but now you have computer-based electronic medical records as well. So having a simple medical record would always increase the quality of care you offer and it will always help in continuity of care without an issue, especially would be important in chronic patients, but also in the other patients as well. And patient safety is very important, safety in dispensing, safety in procedures. Think of other things as well, like, you know, consent, privacy, uh, having... You know, chaperones, now uh, legal problems are quite common in these days. So these things, so patient safety is one of the main thing that you could, uh, could address to maintain the quality of care. You can do some audits in your own practice. You can identify problems in your own practice, could be by yourself, your staff, by patients. Just listen to them, change them, see whether things have gone correct or still it's it has problem so this is this is this is how you are going to maintain the quality of care and offering more services would be important as a gp to increase the quality of care in other countries gps do a lot of things in sri lanka the problem is we have pps that is prior practitioners not real gps who have qualified and trained so they have not trained on many things so they cannot or could not offer many care many many services but an ideal GP is a person who could provide many uh, things to the to their patients. It's like a Swiss knife, lot of lot of options. So what are the what are the services that could be could be offered? Like it's always you do offer services on self limiting illnesses, simple cough and cold uh, packages, etc. But also you can have uh, you can handle emergencies. It's not a big stuff. You have to have initial, uh, I mean, main things like adrenaline and ambu bag, oxygen, um, probably uh, nebulizer. These things and a training, definitely, on these things. So not only self-limiting illnesses, also emergencies. And more, if you are not trained, if you don't have equipment, you are putting your patients uh, into danger, they would seek. Uh, they would seek your care, thinking that you would help, but you cannot. They would even die in an emergency like anaphylaxis. So uncomplicated chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, uh, asthma, you could always uh, provide your care. When they are complicated, you can always refer to a specialist or subspecialist and get the opinion and they would most all the time will refer back. Even if not, you have offered the service and your patient will come to you. So this is one, another thing. And minor surgical procedures, like cutting of one, lumps and bumps, um, wound care. If you learn these things properly, I mean, you, you, don't, you shouldn't send those patients to the uh, secondary or tertiary care hospitals, you yourself can do it 
while addressing the patient safety uh, as well. And gynecological and family planning procedures like pap smears, uh, uh, probably IUCD insertion, general insertions, these things even I do in my practice. So these things could be done if you are trained and you have, if you have equipment. And antenatal and postnatal care, immunization is a, a service that more, in most of the countries GPs provide. It's all about availability and having some knowledge on that. And screening for NCDs, always you can do. It, it's also related to health uh, promotion and prevention as well. And home visits. Well, the earlier times, GPs were very well known for home visits, and now it's less, it's less but you can always offer it for people like old people, people who cannot move, and you know, uh, people with palliative conditions you can always offer uh, home visits. That's a very important service as well. So many more. I have no, I haven't mentioned everything, but just at a glance to you to understand how much and to increase quality of care, you have to have knowledge and skills and also attitudes, definitely. So to get knowledge and skills, you have to follow CPD continuous professional development activities. And you can also update your knowledge by looking at the guidelines, always follow the guidelines and CPDs. Now you have, you know, you have seen now the webinars, are, they are always, so even the College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka and the Sri Lanka Medical Association offer many uh, CPD activities where you can, you know, they are most of the time in feasible times for GPs, like, Saturday evening and afternoons in the nights. So you can always get into get in touch and uh, participate in these things and get your knowledge updated. Read journals, uh, participate in CPD activities, sessions, webinars, and read guidelines and follow them. So that, that, that is the way to increase the quality of care. And training is most important. If you are going to be uh, Private practitioner initially be a GP, then a qualified family practitioner. Try to earn a GP qualification. So there are a lot of there, there are there are a lot of uh, the MCGP two year uh, a two year course. This this uh, flies has been uh, the flyer that have been put, has been put this. So it's a two year course, which is uh, from the credit. Uh, uh credits it's similar to an uh, to a master's and you have uh, you have uh, so it's 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 a, uh, it's a part-time course uh which has clinicals as well where the duty leave is so, so available from the ministry of health through the college of general practitioners of sri lanka but you have to have two year two year post uh intern um, experience to start the MCG, so you can be a private practitioner initially, and after two years, you can follow the MCGP course. Then the PGI offers two courses, like Diploma in Family Medicine, which is one year course, full time, and also uh, the MD in Family Medicine, where private practitioners also can, uh, specialist family physicians needed for the, uh, the government sector. But private sector people also can apply a small quota is available for private, private sector as well but as a government doctor you can always apply and be a md you can earn the md qualification after the selection exam but uh dfm md has selection exams but mcgb does not have a selection exam but you have you have to have stipulated qualifications plus you have to have to pass from an interview so there are other opportunities for a GP. Uh, GP, uh, qualified GPs have opportunities in private companies as company doctors. It's a, a, a matter of visiting the company once or twice a week sometimes. You can earn something extra. And uh, GPs have a professional career in general practitioner of family medicine related organizations like College of General Practitioners of Sri Lanka and Wonka, where I as a as Sri Lankan have gone as, as uh, is in the, uh, the, the executive committee of the World Organization of Family Doctors elected there. So everybody has these opportunities 
So you can also involve in teaching if you are interested in, because MCGP course uh, is there for the College of General Practice in Sri Lanka, where the qualified uh, uh, general practitioners with special interests and special qualifications are also lecturers to them. And they can be mentors and they can be GP trainers as well in future after earning the qualification. And also the MCGP and MD and the ADFM, they, they, are, they, they serve as uh, uh, qualifications for the GP careers in other countries as well, especially in the Middle East countries and also the College of General Practice of Sri Lanka is um, trying to get recognition in the, in the European countries and Australia as well. But when you have a qualification, GP qualification, which is accredited by SLMC in Sri Lanka, you will be exempted from many things, even in the countries where they have you have to follow a training course. So these are the opportunities available if you have become a qualified GP, not a, not a private practitioner just with an MPP. So uh, in a nutshell, what I would uh, advocate you is about being a qualified GP. General practice is a very important field and an interesting field where you have a very close doctor-patient relationship, a close relationship with patients. You would really enjoy that if you become a general practitioner because there's a continuity of care and continuity of relationship and you will see your patients succeeding. You will see your patients and you will be invited and you will be a part of their lives as well and you'll be a happy doctor as well if you become a GP. But you shouldn't be just a private practitioner. You have to earn a qualification. You have to be trained. Then you can offer a lot of services to your clients, your patients, and you have a lot of opportunities as well as a GP when you become a qualified, trained GP. So being a specialist, is another pathway, but being a generalist is another interesting pathway. But it's not simple as having an MBBS and just going and opening a private practice. It's uh, another important path where you have to follow your basics and you have to update yourself and go ahead. So this is the Wonka Young Doctors movement. You can just search the Wonka website. World Organization of uh, Family Doctors. Uh, all of you can become members of Wonka Young Doctors Movement. And in Sri Lanka, we have in the South Asia, you have the Spice Root Movement as the uh, regional body. And Sri Lanka also has a Spice Root Movement for Young Family Doctors. And thank you very much, guys, for giving this opportunity. And thank you for listening patiently. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm ready to ask. Thank you, Parma.